Welcome back to my channel. Today we're in Tucson, Arizona and visiting Pima Air and Space Museum. A quick glance at the map reveals just how massive the museum grounds are, home of the more than 400 aircrafts. Near the entrance, we're greeted by Douglas A4C, a light attack aircraft. It played a significant role in various military operations, particularly during the Cold War era. As we get closer to the museum entrance, we can see a Space Shuttle Rocket Buster. Now we are at the entrance and ticket office. With over 80 acres of aircraft displays, it recommends to spend at least two days to fully appreciate everything this museum has to offer. Here is the map of the museum and we are starting from Hangar 1. One of the first highlights is a replica of the Wright Brothers plane, a beautiful reminder of how far we have come since the early days of flight. Pratt and Whitney R4360, one of the largest and the most powerful radio aircraft engine ever built. Westinghouse 19B Yonkey, a jet engine that powers several early US jet fighters. Nearby the General Electric J47 engine, which powered the legendary F-86 Sabre. This is a World War I-era aircraft engine, Clarkett 9B. We pass by several more engines in this area, each representing an important step in the evolution of aviation technology. And this is an example of turboprop engine, the Allison T-56. This is an example of Russian radio engine, Shvetsov S-62. We are now transported to the iconic B-52D Thruster Fortress Dale Gunner's position. This strategic bomber served in the US Air Force for decades. After Jantic B-52, we see Star Bumblebee, one of the world's smallest manned aircraft. A 
And this is early US Navy aircraft Curtis F6C4. Westland Lynx AH-7 was a utility and attack helicopter primarily used by the British AAC. HUM-1 was the US Navy destination for the Sikorsky H-19, a multi-purpose helicopter primarily used for utility and transport purposes. Next we come across the famous Bell UH-1C Aircast helicopter, famously featured in the Apocalypse Now movie with Marlon Brando. A six-barrel gun and a rocket launcher. The museum gave us an opportunity to listen how the engine of the, this helicopter works. Our journey through the museum continues as we pass by an impressive array of planes like a Beechcraft Model S18D and the Learjet Model 23. The Grumman F-14A Tomcat become of the most iconic fighter jets in the 20th century due to the association with the key military operations and its advanced capabilities and its presence in the popular culture, such as Top Gun in 1986. The Lockheed Model 10A Electra is a famous primarily for the association with the pioneering aviation achievements, for example, Amelia Earhart final flight in 1937. Also, the Model 10A Electra played a significant role in the development of the commercial air travel in the 1930s. We 
we are moving to the part of the hangar where the missiles and nuclear bombs are displayed. An example of the glide bomb, a GM-154A. The B-57 nuclear bomb was a US tactical nuclear weapon developed in the early 60s and was designed for various delivery platforms such as A-4 Phantom II and uh, A-4 Skyhawk. And the B-61 nuclear bomb is the most versatile and low service nuclear weapon in the United States arsenal and it's still in use. The B-53 is an example of a thermonuclear weapon developed by the United States during the Cold War. It was the most powerful nuclear bombs ever built, with a yield of 9 megatons of TNT. The Columbia XGL-1 is primarily known for being an experimental amphibious aircraft developed both for the US Navy by Columbia Aircraft Corporation in the 1940s. The Marin PBM-5A Mariner was a twin-engine patrol bomber flying boat developed by the Glenn L. Martin Company and used primarily by the US Navy and the Coast Guard during and after World War II. The aircraft was well known for the versatile and role in marine patrol, search and rescue and anti-submarine warfare. The Lockheed SR-71A Blackbird is the most iconic and groundbreaking aircraft ever developed, renowned for its speed, altitude capabilities and unique role during the Cold War. Built by Lockheed's Skunk Work Division, led by legendary engineer Kelly Johnson, the SR-71 was a long-range Mark III Plus strategic reconnaissance aircraft used by the United States Air Force. And this is a SAR-71 deceleration parachute. You can see the engine of SR-71. That's take about 12,000 pounds of fuel per hour. That equates to roughly 1,850 gallons per hour. The Lockheed GTD-21B was a high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance drone developed during the Cold War to gather intelligence over hostile territories, but its operational use was limited due to technical challenges and the advert satellite reconnaissance. You can see firefighter truck used by US Navy and Marine Corps. The A-10A Thunderbolt II is an Air Force close air support aircraft designed primarily for attacking ground targets such as tanks, armed vehicles and other enemy forces. Mm -hmm. 
One of the most distinctive features is a 30mm 7 barrel Gatling gun, which is the primary weapon for attacking armed targets. The gun is capable of firing up to 3,900 rounds per minute. The Bell AH-1S Cobra is famous for being one of the primary attack helicopters used by US Army. Stepping outside, we explore more of the Museum Salador collection. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom is one of the most famous and versatile aircraft in the military history. It's a little bit hot outside and we move into Hangar 8 to see the B-17 Flying Fortress. The Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress is famous for being one of the most iconic and heavily used American bombers during World War II. Known for its durability, long-range capabilities and a significant role in the strategic bombing campaigns against Nazi Germany, the B-17 earned a legendary reputation. We have an opportunity to glimpse inside the B-17 bomber. This is an example of ammunition that B-17 can use. B-17 engine and here's a tail gunner position Jeep Willis is famous for being the iconic military vehicle for World War II. Mm -hmm. 
you can see inside the tail gunner position from B-17. Let's go to the second floor of museum to see the B-17 from the top. Soon we go outside to see more planes than inside. For example, we will take a look on B-52 strategic bomber. Let's take a look at the map. You can see that planes located in groups. The North American RA-5C is famous for being a care-based aircraft used by US Navy during the Cold War and the Vietnam War, originally designed as a supersonic nuclear strike bomber. And we are moving closer to B-52 bomber. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress is a famous for being one of the longest serving and the most versatile strategic bomber in the history. The B-52 is known for its incredible range. It can fly over 1,800 miles or 14,000 kilometers without refueling. The B-52 can carry up to 70,000 pounds or 31,750 kilograms of bombs and missiles. The B-58A is famous for being the first operational supersonic jet bomber, capable to reach Mach 2 speeds. And this is a MiG-15, an example of the Soviet fighter. This MiG-19 is next generation of MiG-15. This mid-generation MiG-17 between MiG-15 and MiG-19. This is another version of MiG-17. This MiG-21 introduced in 1959 and take part in Vietnam War. This is MiG-29 has been involved in numerous conflicts since its introduction in the early 80s. More than 15 countries still have this fighter in service.
we are moving to this section with helicopters. The Sikorsky CH-54A is famous for being a heavy lift helicopter designed for the US Army during the 60s. We are moving closer to BGM-109 Tomahawk. It's a famous for being a long-range subsonic cruise missile used primarily by the US Navy and Royal Navy for precision strikes against the high-value targets. And you can see a Thunderbolt 2 flying over a museum. Cessna 172 Skyhawk is famous for being the most produced aircraft in the history and the most popular and widely used general aviation airplanes. The museum is located in Tucson, Arizona, so you can expect many cactuses everywhere. We are moving closer to Sikorsky CH-37B. It's famous for being one of the first heavy lift helicopters used by US military, introduced in the 50s. The Mi-24 is a Soviet-made attack helicopter. This particular example was part of the East German Army in the 1980s. The museum personnel using Humvee for transportation. This Alpha jet was part of Luftwaffe. The Cluster Meteor, the UK's first jet-powered aircraft, stands proudly next. Its role in World War II is legendary, as it makes a turning point in air combat. This is another example on B-52 bomber.
Next we come to the Corsair B36 G Peacemaker, the largest piston engined aircraft ever built and a key plant in America's Cold War strategic bomber fleet. The Lockheed EC-121T, an early warning aircraft, was a critical for a war radar and uh, communication during its service. And this example of British innovation in maritime patrol and anti-submarine warfare. The KB-15G air tanker, a modified B-50 bomber, was used to mid-air refueling, an essential development in the standing aircraft range. The Douglas S-24 Globemaster, known as Old Shaky, was a key cargo plane during the 1950s and 60s. Standing beside is the Douglas S-123B Cargo Master massive transport aircraft used during the early years of the Cold War. Next we marvel at the Air Space Lines Super Guppy, a specialized transport aircraft famous for the carrying of resized cargo, including parts of the Saturn V rocket launched to the moon. The amphibious Grumman HU-16A is next, built for the rescue missions both on land and sea. Another cargo giant, the Lockheed C-130A Hercules, has been in service for over 60 years and is still in use today. We stop at the piece of a uh, US history, VC-137B Stratoliner Freedom 1, deal number 86971. This VAP transport has used to bring home US hostages from Iran in 1981. This VAP transport used by US presidents such as Dwight Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Johnson, Richard Nixon, Jeff Ford, Jimmy Carter. Nearby we find the Douglas FC-118A Liftmaster, tail number 33240, which has been used by US presidents including Harry Truman.
the locket VC140B tail number 12489 served as A-Force 140US presidents including Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon. The Lockheed C-141B Starlifter showcases its massive cargo capacity capable of transporting both troops and supplies across the globe. Moving on we see the hangar where the museum staff restored this amazing aircraft to their former glory preserving aviation history for future generations. The futuristic-looking Beechcraft Starship catched our attention with its sleek and avant-garde design. Next, the compact Cessna 120 brings us back to general aviation, showing how small aircraft were used for both civilian and training purposes. We then come across the collection of F-16 fighter jets in the various configuration, showcasing the adaptivity of this versatile aircraft. Then we move into Hangar 3. We go to the HU-25A Guardian cockpit. This, this plane is uh, famous for US Coast Guard service. The V-1 rocket, also known as the V-1 Flying Bomb or Buzz Bomb, is a famous for being the world's first operational cruise missile and the key weapon used by Nazi Germany during World War II. The Aleutian Il-2 Sturmovik is famous for being one of the most produced and effective ground attack aircraft of the World War II. It played a crucial role in the Soviet Union's air campaigns against Nazi Germany, particularly on the Eastern Front. The Douglas A26C Invader is famous for being a highly versatile and effective twin-engine attack bomber used by the United States during the and after World War II.
consolidated B-24G Liberator is famous for being a heavy bomber used extremely for the Allied forces during World War II. It's known for the significant contribution to the air war in the both European and Pacific theaters. We are moving to Hangar 4 to see other planes and also B-29. As we move into Hangar 4, we come face to face with the B-29 bomber, serial number 4470016. This bomber particularly in various World War II operations, including missions in the Pacific Theater. This is a uranium ore using for nuclear weapon production. It's a fat man and little boy nuclear bombs models. The Bell P-63 King Cobra is famous for being an improved version of the Bell P-39E Cobra, designed as a fighter aircraft during World War II. Although it did not see extensive combat service in the U.S. Army forces. It was notable used by Soviet Union and land lease agreements. The Curtis C-46D Commando is famous for being a large transport aircraft used primarily during World War II. This is an example of another MiG-15 Soviet fighter. The B-22 Mitchell became famous for its role in the Doolittle Raid on April 18, 1942, in which 16 B-25 bombers were launched from the deck of the aircraft carrier USS Hornet to bomb Tokyo and other Japanese cities. We step in the space hangar where we greet by the X-15A2 mock-up and the Apollo Command Module mock-up.
And this is a space shuttle cockpit using for training astronauts. MQ-5B Hunter, it plays a critical role in providing real-time intelligence during military operations, including in Iraq and Afghanistan. The Rocketdyne MB-3 engine used for early version of Delta rockets during the 50s and 60s. The Rocketdyne C-10 is famous for being used in the Titan I ICBM. Here is the model of the SOFIA telescope. The SOFIA stands for Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy. It's famous for being a unique observatory mounted on the Boeing 747. Moving outside, we can see Buffalo Armed Vehicle is renowned for mine resistant design and a critical role in the road clearance and explosive ordnance disposal, protecting troops from EID during the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. You can see T-72 tank is famous for being a Soviet-designed main battle tank that became one of the most widely produced and exported tanks in the world. You can see the Iraqi version. The Husky K3 is famous for being a mine detecting vehicle designed to locate and mark landmines and improvised explosive devices. And also you can see the M60 A1 tank is famous for being a key main battle tank used by the US military during the Cold War. As we wrap up this incredible journey through the Pima Air and Space Museum, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel for the more fascinating trips through the history. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next adventure.